Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to my new video. It's Hypno here. I really hope you enjoy. And in today's video, I'm gonna be playing this new logbait deck that I just created like five days ago. I already uploaded one video about this, but I feel like this deck definitely deserves to get shown a bit more because in the current meta it's really good and yeah it's also super fun to play so he might go for a giant in front of this so i have my valk ready yeah really nice i can go for the valk now and that giant is just gonna die he can't also really go for a spell on offense because then he would just get rolled from my wall breakers and goblin barrel and i can support this um, evil skellies with my e-spirit to make sure they chain onto the guards really nice e-spirit there he has to waste something yeah there's a zap he almost missed the zap i can just ignore the bowler for a bit until i get enough elixir with the dart goblin i'd rather go for the princess aggressive because i can let him get damage with the bowler uh, i want to go opposite lane of him so by him getting two bowler shots i kind of make him want to go even more in the opposite lane so yeah that's really good for me because that way i can sneak through princesses on the opposite lane or for example barrels and he will always be forced to respond in this lane but yeah those guards are not really gonna do anything right because he's trying to push in the other lane right now so yeah i can just set up my princess to make sure I take no damage from the guards and he still has to respond to my princess so this princess gonna get good value look at that giant i don't really know about that giant because he will still have to respond to my princess and i can just defend the giant with a cannon and whatever he puts with the giant i can okay what is that graveyard i don't know about that graveyard i have e-spirit and dart goblin in hand so i don't really know what he was thinking that he's gonna get with the graveyard there but yeah, look at that we've defended flawless so all right hopefully yeah my dart goblin can connect onto the bowler and also my princess is sniping it so this bowler is gonna be dead before he can get something like to protect the bowler so yeah my dart goblin is also targeting his witch so that witch is almost dead he can't really support the witch with a giant in front because that would just be a terrible play and i just set up my bulk in the back of the um, giant lane and okay he goes for really bad bets because my princess is gonna survive right and his evil bets were completely wasted i can just go for my evil skellies onto the giant here look at those evil skellies they're gonna shred the whole giant man evil skellies are still so broken like they are really good just in certain situations they just don't get the value anymore anymore they did and look at the barrel on the side and the double wall breaker connection that was a really good barrel push and I can just block the bowler with the Valk really good. He has to waste the arrows, but now he's gonna have a lot of trouble to defend. Hopefully one of my wall breakers can connect here. Okay, I'll go for the E-Spirit to make sure I kill the bats. Unfortunately, no wall breaker connection, but it's fine. I'll just set up my princess in the back and it's really awkward for him to yeah, deal with my princess in the back because he needs to arrows them on offense to break through. And if he arrows them on offense, he can't defend my barrel on defense, so... Yeah, that was a really great game. I didn't feel like he played too well, but yeah, GG's. We're in the next game against this guy. All right, he goes for Hawk Rider first play. Luckily for once, I have my cannon and cycle after the wall breakers. So yeah, that's really nice. Normally when they go Hawk Rider first play, I don't have my cannon nowhere in cycle. So, okay, he has the mini Pekka. So he's definitely gonna be running a very weird hawk rider eq deck with the mini packer i know this deck for quite some time now it used to be a bit of a popular deck but not too much but still some people play it so there's his ice golem i know he has the firecracker also so yeah gonna be pretty interesting to play him here because you don't really see this kind of hawk rider deck anymore so all right, just going for the princess in the back because he doesn't have a good way to get that off the board besides logging it. And I can predict this cracker here, so I'll go for my skelly start goblin. He actually goes for the cracker, so... And he goes for the hawk rider. That's a really bad hawk rider because, yeah, my dart goblin and princess live. And he goes for the earthquake to kill my princess, but now I can just pressure him with the wall breakers. And, all right, that was a really good ice golem because, yeah, look at that ice golem. Because of the Ice Golem, he was able to lock the Wall Breakers, so... But now he's gonna take a lot of damage from the Barrel, for sure, because he doesn't have a good way to stop this with, yeah, the lock. 
and everything being out of cycle. I'll actually go for the princess and predict his mini packa because he doesn't have anything else good to put onto the princess. So yeah, I'm just gonna go for my princess and a millisec after I'll go for my evil skeddies predicting the mini packa. So hopefully, okay, yeah, there's his mini packer. He has to waste the EQ also, but now I can just pull back the mini packer with my evil wall breaker. So that's gonna be a really good trade. I spent um, six elixir and he spent seven, and with the log and the skellies, he, pen he spent ten, and we still got damage with the princess, right? So that was a really good prediction there onto the mini packer. He goes for the hawk rider, but now I can just go for my cannon like this, and the other tower will shoot the. Um, Hawk Rider also, so I'm not really worried about it getting any hits. Also, this Dart Goblin is gonna activate the King Tower because of the Firecracker, and it still lives, so I can just support it with the E-Spirit predicting the Skellies, and he might be going for like a Firecracker in the middle in a moment again, so I'll predict it with my Skellies and Dart Goblin. Okay, no way, man, he actually went for the Cracker again. Also, his evil Skellies instantly died. Hopefully my Dark Goblin can live here. No, the Dark Goblin walked into the Firecracker Poison, but it's fine. We can just defend this easily. He also went for a pretty bad second Cracker there because I was gonna put my Valk onto the Evolution Cracker anyway, so that second Cracker was completely wasted. He has to waste the EQ Ice Spirit onto the Wall Breakers. Now I can just go for the um, Evo Skellies onto the Mini Packer, which is really nice and yeah, he has a lot of trouble defending both lanes because both of, the, both, of, both of the lanes already took so much damage. So I'll go for my wall breakers here and barrel opposite lane. Keep up the pressure. Also, I'll go for my um, E spirit to make sure that he doesn't get any cracker shots onto the tower. And yeah, that's gonna be game. Princess is on tower. So yeah, perfect pressure I feel like with this game. We pre predicted him quite a lot. So yeah, really good game here. We're in the next game against CNG Cracker and I'll actually go really aggressive here because I know this guy only has Fireball and Zap with the drill so he really has to overspend to defend this. Yeah, he has to go for the Valk and the Zap. That was a decent defense from him but yeah, we still managed to get one Goblin shot and I'm not too worried about this Valk. Okay, he's going way too aggressive here. He's gonna get good damage with the drill which I kind of have to take. But now he's just gonna have to deal with this counter push and he can't really defend both lanes. Okay, he goes for the guards on the left. No way he can stop my wall breakers now. He goes for the zap, but the zap really doesn't do anything because both wall breakers still connect and the zap maybe makes my Valkyrie get one shot less, but maybe not even. Maybe it would have been the same amount of hits. So not the best zap there, but I guess he cycles to his evil zap, right? So... Yeah, really good start to the game here. He also has to waste the Tesla, so I can just wait a little bit. And yeah, if I hit 10 Elixir, I'm just gonna pressure him. And I'll wait for the Tesla to die. Also, guys, I'm gonna be starting to stream soon. Like, right now I'm buying my new setup with new PC because my current PC doesn't, like, have the ability to stream without lags. So I really need a new one. But recently I saw a lot of people streaming on YouTube from phone. So I was wondering what you guys um, want me to stream from like, first of all, do you want me to stream on Twitch or do you want me to stream on YouTube? And yeah, do you want me to stream with cam or without cam? Because if I like upload full screen like I do on YouTube um, when I'm streaming, then I can't fit my cam right because where am I, am I gonna put my face with the cam if I have the full screen like right now and you're watching from phone right so I need to kind of put an overlay so you can see like the chat and you can see my face like the cam so I'm curious to know if you want me to just like stream Clash Royale like I play in YouTube and then just commentate over my games and talk to you guys in the chat. Or if you want me to actually stream with an overlay and see my face. So yeah, kind of like on Twitch, right? Everyone on Twitch that's big in the Clash Royale scene streams with an overlay. So if you don't really know what I'm talking about, just go to Twitch and see like the looks of CR streamers there. None of them is playing with like the full Clash Royale screen. Everyone has a overlay.
but everyone on YouTube is playing with like, yeah, just a full screen with no cam. So I'm wondering what you guys want to see because both the Twitch streams and YouTube streams get quite viewed a lot. So I don't really know if I should stream with cam or without cam. So yeah, enough of that talk. Just let me know in the comments and we are out pressuring this guy so hard right now. Like we have him in the perfect cycle. Also, what was that bomber? His bomber is dead. Okay, looks like he's... Is he gonna give up here? Because he just let... Okay, he's not giving up, but what was that Valk? I can just protect my princess with my own Valk and that's basically gonna be game. He has to overspend so much and now I can just go for my evil skellies on the left. The evil Zap kind of saved him, but <laughs> yeah, he still loses tower to the barrel. So yeah, really nice game here and I'll see you guys for one more game. We are in the final game for today. I know this is Newbie's second account and yeah, he's gonna be playing Golem with the Evo Bomber, Zap and Arrows, so gonna be pretty interesting to play him here. I normally have a really bad matchup against him, but with this deck that I'm running right now, it should actually be a really good matchup. Not really good, but definitely in my favor because I have the um, Electro Spirit against his Night Witch. And I have the cannon against the golem and also the Valkyrie puts in a lot of work against his backup push. So I'm not too worried because I also can force out the arrows with the princess or the dart goblin. And yeah, if he, dart go if he arrows my dart goblin, I will just get a really good value with my princess. And the other way around, if he arrows my princess, I'm gonna get really good value with the dart goblin. So yeah, this is actually gonna be more than a decent matchup. If I pressure him well, he shouldn't re he, he shouldn't be really able to make a good golden push to break through. He needs a really good big golden push to break through, but if he gets one big golden push, I already make sure that I pressure him really well and take one tower for example. So, yeah, gonna be very hard for him to get a good push though get a good push going without losing one of his towers. So I'll go for the barrel to the side so my E-Spirit can still connect onto the Evo Bomber if he puts it. And yeah, I'll, I'll be able to activate the King Tower here. I'm just gonna let the Mega Minion go and set my Dart Goblin up in the back to not waste any Elixir. And then I'll go for my Skellies to activate, pressure him opposite lane with the Warbreakers and support my Dart Goblin with the barrel. This is gonna be very good damage on both lanes. Might be even tower with the Electro Spirit, but no, not gonna be tower. But yeah, down to 300 HP. He gets the Lucky King Tower activation with the Golem, but it's fine because yeah, we definitely gonna be taking one of his towers, right? So, all right, he arrows my princess. Now I can just set up my Dart Goblin and I get a really good Electro Spirit here, down here. That was That's what I was talking about. I can let the golem connect for a bit. I just need to make sure I defend the e-bobs. And yeah, his night witch and bomber are already almost dead. So I just get another really good e-spirit down here. And look at that defense. We defended it really well. Like we split up the damage um, super well. And <laughs> what was that mega minion? He let my dart goblin connect. So this is gonna be game. We might even take the second tower with the evil wallbreakers here. Yeah, taking second tower. He gives us the well played even though he's mostly toxic. I'm wondering if his well played is ironic or if he's being serious, but yeah, really nice last game here from us and I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me get, let me know down in the comments if you want me to stream on Twitch or YouTube and with cam or with no cam. So yeah, I'll see you guys for the next video. Like and sub if you enjoyed. Bye!